Okay, we're going to start off by placing our central incisors. Again, we want to use our rim as a guide, so we're going to take out some wax so that we can actually set the central incisor. So you want to have enough wax gone so you have room for the teeth, but you still want to leave a little bit of wax in that area so that you can position the tooth. So we've established our occlusal plane with our rim for our patient, and we've established the facial contour of our rim with our patient also so we have something that's going to look nice and is going to be uh, the correct incisal position, the correct facial position for the tooth. So remember you're going to spend quite a bit of time with these central incisors because you, you really want to take your time setting them. Ideally we're doing this with the patient right there chair side so we can try it in the patient's mouth for evaluation of midline and incisal edge and, and all of that. For our simulated patient, again, we're going to be utilizing the uh, uh, frenum attachment for our midline because obviously our patient doesn't have an, or the rest of their face, otherwise we would be able to establish a midline for them. So again, as you can see here, we've, we've set one tooth. You can see we're carving away wax for the other central for tooth number eight. And again, we're removing some of the wax, but you still want to leave wax there because you need to have wax to be able to set the tooth. The key here is you want to go through and you want to heat the wax in the areas where you might be manipulating the tooth. You want the wax to be soft, not liquid, and not hard, because you want to be able to freely be able to move this tooth if you start moving the tooth and, and you have not heated things appropriately, you'll hit something, it causes the tooth to shift in a direction you don't want it to go. Sometimes it can cause either just malpositioning of that tooth or sometimes you can actually push another tooth out of the way. <clears throat> so we're letting the wax cool just a little bit and then we're setting the next tooth. We're going to bring our plate back in. Again, we want to have the centrals lined up with this plate so we want the incisal edges on the plate. We want to facially have the teeth in line with our wax rim. And we want to use the midline of the frenum attachment. That's what we're using as far as the simulated patient. Again, on a live patient, you would use whatever uh, midline you have determined is appropriate for the patient. So you're going to continually put this in and out of the patient's mouth on the clinic to ensure that you have the midline. And it, again, it takes some time. You're going to spend a bit of time working with these central incisors to get them appropriately positioned. <clears throat> but for our class, we're going to use the frenum attachment as our midline. Again, they should be on the, the incisal edges should be touching the table. And there's a normal natural distal bulge to the facial surface to the central, and so they look slightly distally inclined, even though they are relatively vertical. Okay, once we have established that, we want to make sure that we have everything positioned. It's also key to have the wax at the same levels around both teeth. Not so much matters as far as the correct festooning. Again, for our Typodon, our simulated patient, we're going to place the facial surfaces eight millimeters out from the center of the incisive papilla. But again, I will add wax in here to do two things. One, to basically solidify the tooth in its position so that we don't have to worry about moving this tooth later on. We want to heat up the wax, get it around there, get the tooth nicely embedded in wax. But I also want to maintain a nice similar level as far as cervically around the teeth with the wax. The reason is is because you may have the teeth in the perfect position, but if one tooth has a little bit more wax around it cervically than the other, then it doesn't quite look right. Then once we've spent that time, got those central incisors exactly where we want to, we have them looted in place, then we're going to take out some wax for the lateral incisor. The key here with the lateral incisor is again looking directly facial, there's a slight distal inclination to the tooth. As you can see, the, the cervical is slightly more distally inclined. And if you want to give the patient a little bit more youthful appearance, you can have the lateral incisor just slightly off the table. Again, this being the character or personality tooth of the setup, this is, there's a lot of things you can do, whether place it in labial version or lingual version. There's a lot of little things that you can do 
with lateral incisor to change the appearance of the patient. So you'll bring in your metal plate and again if you want to have it on the plate you can. If you want a little more youthful appearance you can have it up and off the plate just a maybe about a millimeter a slight distal inclination and then you want to just maintain that nice curvature again for your patients following that facial surface of your wax rim because you placed you adjusted it modified it in the patient's mouth determine the direct or the, the amount of uh, buccal corridor you're going to have for the patient and so placing these teeth you're really using again that wax rim as your guide okay so once I have the lateral incisors positioned where I feel comfortable then we move on to the canines and again I'm doing the exact same thing I'm taking wax out of the position for the tooth again leaving some wax but with the lateral or the canine you're going to have more of a vertical if not slightly really distal, distal inclination. inclination then we're going to remove the wax just like we did before heat it and then again take the canine and place it in position so we're looking straight on a little bit vertical if not slight distal inclination we also have to keep in mind one of the key things with the canines to make them look correct is they need to be in this toed in position Whereas you can see, denoted by the red lines, the cervical is out more than the incisal edge. It's very important as far as to have that toed in look because, again, the canine does not look like the incisors. When you set the tooth so it looks like the incisors, something doesn't look right. Then you bring back your plate. Again, the canine should be, even if you had the lateral incisors slightly off the plate, canine should be back on the plate, pointing out here a vertical if not a slightly distal inclination. Then when you're looking straight down the midline, you should only see the mesial facial surface because remember the canine turns the corner. So not only should it have that vertical, maybe slightly distal incline when you're looking straight at the canine, also it should have that toed in appearance where the cervical is out further than the incisal edge. But when you look straight down the midline, you should only see the mesial facial surface of the canine. If you see the entire facial surface of the canine, then the canine hasn't turned the corner enough. And so you need to rotate the position of your canine. So those are the things that you're looking at, the landmarks you're looking at to make sure that your canine is in the proper position. Again, following facially the shape and form of your wax rim that you spent time adjusting in the patient's mouth. Be a little bit of a... Uh, issue with some of the wax rims for class. Some of them may not be shaped quite perfectly. Again, that's because we don't have a patient. This is just showing you a picture showing you where you only see that mesial facial surface. That distal facial surface has rounded the corner. So looking right down the midline, just that mesial facial surface should be visible. Okay, sometimes you can put a little wear on the cusp tip of the canine. What I would do is either set it slightly long to begin with and then adjust it down to get rid of the cusp tip to shorten it back to the plane or you can just artificially shorten it at the very beginning and then place it down on the plane but it's usually about the same level as the central incisors so just like you have the central incisors incisal edge touching this plate the canine should be also once you've gone through and you've set all of the anterior teeth you still have some wax rim lingual to those teeth that will get in the way of setting our mandibular teeth. The easiest thing here is just to take a hot instrument and take it through that wax and soften it. So I'm just getting a very hot instrument going through this area. You don't want to try to take this off in one block because that will probably cause your teeth to either shift or actually come off with the block that you're trying to remove. So just taking a hot instrument going through and then you want to have the wax go right in line with the linguals of the teeth. So I will take the, the flat spoon edge of the number seven wax spatula and just slowly with a hot instrument slide it down the lingual surface of the teeth. And you need to make sure you have plenty of wax around these teeth so they don't move when you do this. But then you just make a nice smooth transition from the lingual surface of the teeth. And again, you should be exposing the, the entire lingual surface of the tooth. 
but you should have a nice smooth transition from the lingual surface of the tooth down to the wax down to your record base. So that's why you see me just taking that spoon end and just pulling it straight down through the wax to make a nice smooth transition. So I just continue this going around, again taking a, making a hot instrument, again a very hot instrument, just so I can take and soften the wax and just drag it down. So we're just kind of slowly melting away and peeling back the wax, any wax that we have. Now this record base, our wax rim is slightly wider than we ideally want, so we have a little bit more wax to remove here. But even if I had a little bit of a rim, it would be the same thing. Again, you just want a nice smooth transition because if you don't have this nice smooth transition from the linguals of the teeth to the wax to the record base, patients can sometimes have significant speech issues. So we want to have a nice smooth transition. We usually don't want to put any kind of a wax block or anything like that behind these teeth because we want to have a nice smooth transition so we don't affect the aesthetics and phonetics of the patient, mainly the phonetics of the patient. Once you have the wax removed, you can come in with a blazer torch and just very gently heat things. Again, you don't really want to liquefy the wax. You want to just heat things just so you can get a nice smooth surface. So just a very light flaming. If there's any voids, you want to take some more wax and add some more wax if you need to do that. But again, just gently flaming it so you end up with a nice smooth transition. And then we have what we want with our maxillary anterior teeth. As we move to the mandibular teeth, we need to do something that's going to help us out a little bit. You can see we remove the wax rim posteriorly. Our mark that goes two-thirds up the retromolar pad, we're now transferring that mark from our land area over onto our record base. The reason for this is we want to make sure they're level, but we want to also help ourselves as far as setting these mandibular anterior teeth because two-thirds up the retromolar pad is our occlusal plane. Then if you take a handpiece and you cut a notch at that line, now you can see here how I've perforated the record base. And that's one reason why you want to do this off the cast, but it's not a big deal if you do perforate the record base because you can always come back in and add some wax to cover that later. But the idea of me creating these two steps at two-thirds of the retromolar pad allows me to take this metal plate and index very easily two-thirds of the retromolar pad, which is our desired occlusal plane posteriorly. Now as we move to the anterior teeth, we put the cast on the articulator, we mark the midline of the mandibular teeth to so the maxillary teeth. Now keep in mind the facial surface that's been determined here is <clears throat> the facial surface that you've decided gives the patient proper lip support in the mouth and makes it so that they can speak appropriately. So that's what we want to do when we set these teeth for our patient. For our simulated patient though, since we don't have the landmarks, we don't have a patient who speaks, we're going to set the mandibular teeth to the maxillary teeth. So just for the simulated patient, we're going to ignore the facial surface of the rim and we may set things slightly facial or lingual to it based on how we need to set them to the maxillary rim. Understand that whenever you set those teeth to the maxillary rim, you're going to set them according to the rim because that's what you've established in the patient's mouth. What I'm demonstrating here is on a similar patient's cast, the, when we were setting the teeth, we ran into the record base. So sometimes it's easiest just to cut a hole completely through the record base and heat some wax up and seal the hole. Now you have direct access to be able to set that tooth all the way directly against the cast if you needed to. And as you can see from the inside of this setup, you don't see any hole or any void in the denture. It's finished with wax. <clears throat> but that allows us to be able to move the teeth even further towards the cast if we needed to do that. What we don't want to do is do too much adjusting of the teeth to get them into position because sometimes we prematurely make the teeth too short. So we set the tooth in and for this simulated patient we're looking for about one to two millimeters of vertical overlap 
one to two millimeters of horizontal overlap. Again, we do not want to have any teeth contacting. As you can see very briefly, if you saw in the picture or in the video that the anterior teeth were slightly touching. So we know we need to move this tooth slightly lingual to the position we just had it. Okay, we're still have very close to contact in that anterior area. So we're going to have to move these teeth even more lingual than where they are right now. And again, you can see for the simulated project, we're actually extending quite a bit lingual to the facial surface of our rim. If this were a live patient, we would want to keep it in line with the facial surface of that rim. So again, heating the wax in the area where we want to place the tooth. So again, I can manipulate the tooth and not have to have hard wax get in the way. So we set the tooth again, trying to maintain one to two millimeters of vertical overlap, one to two millimeters of horizontal overlap. And also we want to try to keep the midline in line between the maxillary anterior teeth and the mandibular anterior teeth. If for some reason later down in processing, we lose that relationship and they are slightly off from each other, that is not really that big of a deal. Um, it just lines up the teeth a little bit better functionally so that it's easier to set them in a, in a fashion so that it, they will function properly together. So again, placing it in, setting the tooth, and trying to establish a nice one to two millimeter of vertical overlap, one to two millimeter of horizontal overlap. The other issue that I often see with these mandibular anterior teeth is that they tend to toe in just like we do with the canines where the cervical is out more than the incisal edge. Remember that the central and lateral incisors, whether they're maxillary or mandibular teeth, they tend to flare out or toe out, meaning that the cervicals are usually in more than the incisal edges. That's one very big distinction between incisors and canines. So here we have a, a decent amount of vertical and horizontal overlap. So again, the first thing you want to do is you want to try to, one, make sure that that tooth is in a good position, make sure that it's solid, and then you're going to take out a little bit more wax for the adjacent tooth. So usually I will spend the time again in the mandibular arch with the central incisors. That's where you're going to be spending most of your time initially with these, with the maxillary arch or the mandibular arch is with the central incisors getting them properly positioned. So I'm going to heat the wax. The nice part now is that I can kind of use the position of the central incisor that I've already set to place this one. And so you will notice that you're able to set the next tooth a little bit faster, assuming that you have the previous tooth in a proper position. Now once I have the tooth to where I feel like I have an even amount between the two centrals, as far as the vertical overlap, the horizontal overlap, I feel like the midline is lined up. That's when I bring in the metal plate to make sure that I'm on the occlusal plane that I want to have. So I'm going to set it on two-thirds up the retromolar pad, and then I'm just going to very gently drop it down on the incisal edges. Now in this particular situation, I was lucky in the fact that the central incisors were pretty close to being right on the plane, but this is where you go in and you just slightly tweak the teeth to make sure that you have a nice, all the incisal edge contacting the teeth. Everything looks nice as far as its vertical height or verticalness as far as a midline. Then you're going to recheck everything, make sure you still have the vertical and horizontal overlap that you want to have. Again, you're going to spend time with these central incisors, getting them properly positioned before you move on. Usually the, the, another problem besides having the cervicals out and the incisal edges in is students not quite getting them in perfect position or in a, in a good position and then moving on to set the laterals. And then usually when you're setting the laterals, it's in relationship to the centrals. And so a, a problem just exponentially grows. Again, keep going back to that plate. Make sure you're on your plane. Make sure all the incisal edges are on the plane, your midline's lined up you have the vertical and horizontal overlap that you want to have. Then the last thing you always want to do is take again some hot liquid wax, flow it around the teeth for again two reasons. One, so that you 
solidify the tooth in its position so that you have a nice uh, solid tooth that's not going to move. And then secondly, cervically, you want to try to get the wax at the same level, not trying to make it look like real gingiva yet. That will, We'll do the, deal with that in a couple of sessions. But you want to make sure that you have enough wax to cover them cervically so that they look even just because of the amount of wax that's covering them. So again, spending time with those central incisors. Make sure you have that one to two millimeters of not only vertical overlap, but horizontal overlap. You want to make sure you have the midlines lined up. Another thing that this picture is showing you is that, that angle. You can see how the cervicals are kind of in. The incisal edges are a little more out. But you want to make sure you have, you're going to maintain that nice occlusal plane with that vertical and horizontal overlap. That's why it's important to keep going back to that metal plate. Once you get the centrals done, then uh, just like in the maxillary arch, the, the other teeth tend to position a little bit easier after that because you have those central incisors as a reference. That's why it's important to add the wax to hold everything in place. That's why it's important to make sure you, you solidify everything. So again, removing some wax for the lateral incisor. Again, I want to get a nice hot instrument and I want to sear the wax. I know that the central incisors at this point are right where I want to have them, and so they're a great guide for me to use to place the lateral incisors. So I can get pretty close as far as just eyeballing the incisal edges in reference to occlusal plane. If I try to follow the curvature a little bit, then I can get it pretty close to where I want to as far as the vertical and horizontal overlap. Again, what happened right here is I was trying to rotate the tooth a little bit. I ran into something hard, so I couldn't just rotate the tooth easily. So I heated a little bit more wax. That allowed me to be able to move things freely within the wax and not be held back by having running into any kind of hard wax. So once I eyeball it, then I'll close it and check, make sure I, f I like my vertical and horizontal overlap. So I just evaluate it. Might be a little close on the distal. So we're rotating the distal, starting to get a little bit too much of a, of a vertical or horizontal overlap. So we're bringing the distal out buckly just a hair. So we get a nice vertical and horizontal overlap. Again, bringing back in that plate to make sure that the incisal edge is completely against the plate. So manipulate the tooth as far as shifting it however you need to in order to establish a nice occlusal plane with those, again, with those anterior teeth. And then I will always go back and double check it again. So now we feel good about the vertical and horizontal overlap of the tooth. We feel like we, we are still on a good occlusal plane in relationship to all three of those teeth. And any little tweaking that you do, you always want to go back and check everything. Check to make sure you're on that plane double check your vertical and horizontal overlap. And then just like the centrals, once I have the lateral incisors in their position that I want them to be, then I will come back in with some wax and just heat up the wax in the area again to make sure that they're solid in place and also cervically making sure that they're at a similar level. Again, it doesn't have to even be the final level but make sure that they're at a similar level so it doesn't throw my eye off. Once we get the incisor set, then we want to move on to the canines. And just as we've done with all of the maxillary anterior teeth and all of the mandibular anterior teeth, we're going to go in, we're going to remove some wax. Again, utilizing a nice warm instrument so we don't break wax, so we don't shift wax, so we don't move teeth. So once we remove some of the wax, then we're going to come in again with a hot instrument and just li liquefy some of the wax around that area, not eliminating the wax, but making, making sure that we have a nice soft wax to be able to manipulate the tooth in that environment. Then we're going to take the canine off the card, and just like the maxillary canine, the mandibular canine is going to look very similar. When you look directly at it, it's going to be more vertical, maybe a slight distal inclination. 
I want to make sure that the incisal edge is still on my plane. So we're going to shift that. I want to make sure that I have a similar vertical and horizontal overlap. This tends to be one of the teeth that a lot of times students will bring back into contact with the maxillary canine. And just remember, with complete dentures, you don't want any of the anterior teeth from canine to canine to touch in centric. <clears throat> it should have that toed-in appearance where the cervical's out a little bit more than the incisal edge. And also, when you look directly at the facial, you should see more of the mesial facial surface than the distal facial surface. So everything that you went by as far as the maxillary canine, you're going to repeat that with the mandibular canine. Again, with a nice vertical and horizontal overlap that's similar than all, with all the other anterior teeth. Because again, we don't want to have these in contact with each other in centric. Again, adding some wax just to again make sure that the tooth is solidly in place and to make sure that it won't move. And then we want to have the wax at a similar level again just so it doesn't throw our eye off whenever we're setting teeth to give us the appearance that it isn't positioned correctly. Again just flowing in a little wax to add in, fill in for voids and clean it up. And then once you are done with the canine, then you're going to go over and set the other lateral incisor and the opposing canine also in the same fashion. So when you get done with your anterior setup, again, rechecking everything, make sure we're all on the plane, make sure that we're headed to two-thirds of the retrovore pad, we have the vertical and horizontal overlap. <clears throat> then we just kind of want to go back over everything and make sure that we feel confident as far as our tooth position. Again, one of the biggest problems that I see students have is realizing that when you have that nice horizontal overlap, you don't have any contact with the canines. So just like you see in this picture, there's no contact with the canines in centric relation or centric occlusion. Again, once you have all six anterior teeth set, you want to make sure you have a nice vertical and horizontal overlap. You can see in these pictures, you can see the space between the canines. You want to make sure all that all six anterior teeth are in contact with this plane. The incisal edges of the incisors, the cusp tips of the canines, again, you can blunt them a little bit if you want to whenever you set them, but you want to make sure everything looks good. Then just like we did in the maxillary arch, we want to have a nice smooth transition of the wax down the lingual surfaces of your wax rims down to your record base. So again, just like we did with the max arch, we're going to take and we're going to heat the wax up in different segments. Usually I just take the, the flat end and just pull it through different segments to heat up the wax and then I turn it sideways so I have the, the flat end of it so where I can just pull the wax down the lingual edge of it. Again, just to, just a smooth. You want to expose the entire lingual surface of the cane of the of the anterior teeth. You don't want to uncover the what we call the ridge lap part of the tooth, but you want to have a nice smooth transition down the lingual surface of the canine. Again, using a hot instrument if we have any voids, you can either pull wax in there or if we need to add a little bit of wax to fill in any voids. So now we've established our maxillary central incisors lined up with the midline of the patient, in this case the frenum attachment for our simulated patient. Incisors are on the plane, but they may be a slight distal bulge to them as far as their inclination. The lateral incisors can be a slight distal inclination following the curve, maybe a little bit up off the plate if you want a more youthful appearance. Canines towed in vertical when looking straight on, only seeing the mesial facial surface. Again, everything in, in, on, on that plate when you put it in the maxillary rim. Maxillary centrals, make sure you might mid, line at the midline with the maxillary central incisors. Make sure that you have a nice one to two millimeter of vertical and horizontal overlap of those anterior teeth, and then make sure that by placing the plate in those posterior notches at two-thirds of the retroboard pad, that the incisal edges are all touching the plane and then maintaining that throughout the all anterior six teeth. Again, with the canine, mandibular canine, similar to the maxillary canines where they're towed in, and then they turn that corner. 
then you remove the lingual wax and the arches, and then you can heat them up just a little bit and make them nice and smooth. Again, keeping the cervical wax at the same level so it doesn't throw our eye off. And there we've set our maxillary mandibular anterior.